This video today is a simple tutorial on fitting one of our pressure regulation valves into a Benjamin Marauder or a Benjamin Marauder uh, platform custom PCP air rifle. Now the Benjamin Marauder is the simplest air gun there is to fit one of these valves into but it is also the most adaptable PCP air gun that I think people fit these regulator valves into and so Quite a few people fit them in quite a few different ways to you know attain and get to the goals that they've set themselves with their air rifle. So we'll go through the different ways that people have been fitting them and then you can choose which is the uh, most suitable or the best way for your own particular project. So to start with, we've got a simple schematic uh, drawing I've done here of the inside of a Benjamin Marauder. It's not to scale and some things don't line up quite correctly but if you've got a Marauder uh, or you're familiar with them then you should uh, recognise the various parts. So the black line is the main action body or the reservoir wall. This grey brown is the, is the barrel and there's a, a pellet sat at the back of the barrel. Transfer port. This is the pressure gauge block with the pressure gauge the screw for holding the trigger mechanism on and the block where the uh, stock attaches and this section is obviously the outlet valve assembly with the three screws around it to hold it into the uh, action body pressure cylinder body and this is the end of the outlet valve stem or I think in America you often call this the poppet valve so the hammer would be in, be in this section here at this end of the drawing so Hopefully that's all clear. Now, the simplest way that people uh, fit the regulator is thus. Because once the regulator is installed, if it was installed behind the uh, gauge block, the gauge is, itself is only going to read the pressure of the air that's coming through the regulator. And quite a number of people want to get as many shots from their PCP as they possibly can. And so they see this as being a wasted airspace, being as that gauge only reads the regulator output pressure. And so all they simply do, and this is the easiest way to fit this regulator, is they take out the gauge block, grease the body case of the, of the regulator and push it in with the breathe hole facing up towards the barrel. And quite often the regulator will sit up against the outlet valve assembly and the hole where the gauge was aligns between the two body case o-rings. If this isn't the case there is a small spacer that we supply and it just moves it a little bit. Uh, most people find that's perfect. Uh, if it isn't then you just need to make yourself a little spacer or alter one that we supply in length. So as the regulator fits up against the outlet valve block and what was the gauge hole in the bottom of the action cylinder is in between these two o-rings. So that is actually the simplest way of doing it. And that would probably uh, be suitable for an air gun up to around, probably about 16 foot pounds uh, muzzle energy, uh, depending obviously which country you're in, you've got to keep your gun legal, but there'd be enough air put through the regulator for that to uh, regulate the gun to that set pressure once you've set your rifle up. Now, the next stage on from this, uh, I'll just take this little spacer out, is people take out their outlet valve assembly and so as to create a bigger outlet valve chamber, any surplus metal that isn't required and it's just, just there because the manufacturers have left it in due to the time of machining it out and extra cost. So people have been removing uh, quite a bit of metal from the uh, outlet valve end cap assembly uh, and leaving a, a step for the outlet valve spring to sit against. I think some have removed a little bit of metal further down in the outlet valve uh, chamber and around the poppet valve but if you're going to do this you've got to be very careful because the uh, outlet valve securing screws that go through the uh, action body reservoir chamber screw into the outlet valve assembly and subsequently you don't want to uh, machine through into one of those otherwise you're in serious uh, serious trouble but that's what they've been doing they've mainly been removing this red area here 
and a little bit at this end. If you're setting the regulator at a very low pressure to get the maximum number of shots at a quite low power, then uh, people have been opening up the transfer port a little bit, and this is the same with very, very high power uh, guns in the US. But there, so that's the simplest way. So simplest way is just simply remove the gauge block and fit the regulator up against the outlet valve assembly. The second way is put the uh, regulator in up against the outlet valve assembly but remove some of the uh, access metal from inside that to make the rifle more efficient and to give you more shots. So the next method which is very simple is people can leave the gauge block in situ and then just put the regulator into the air cylinder and let it sit up against the gauge block. But obviously when doing this, you need to remember that you need to drill the breathe hole for the regulator. So this would go in the top of the cylinder, say here, so as the regulator will uh, function properly. So that would sit in, sit in like that. So that's the next way. Uh, carrying on from this, as like with the, the outlet the valve mechanism itself, some people have machined out the access metal that's inside this gauge block. I think some have machined it off center so as the, the gauge is left in exactly where it is with a, a little plastic seat at the bottom. Others have machined out all the way through this area so as you can actually get your little finger all the way through the uh, gauge block and then the gauge itself has been sealed in using PTFE tape because it's an MPT thread which means it's a tapered thread and they put the PTFE tape around that and screw that in tight and then that forms a seal. So this gives you more outlet valve uh, chamber space by doing, by doing this. And then the next thing that some people have done who've got a uh, large calibre marauders, uh, very high powers in the States, is that then done exactly the same thing but they've added a space so now the sp this particular space that they've added isn't very big it's between quarter of an inch and 10 millimeters is what people have told me that they've fitted we were issuing a spacer originally that was about this big uh, but people uh, reported back that they've gradually cut it down and cut it down and fitted it so most people are now fitting a space that's only quarter to eight mil uh, thick in there so they're generally the different ways of fitting the, the regulator. Now, another way that so what some people have done, which is quite interesting, is they've taken their gauge block out, fitted the regulator in where the gauge block would, would sit like that. But then what they've done is they've let me open this up, they've hollowed out the gauge block and fitted the gauge block because they managed to get enough metal out of it uh, sort of around the stem of the regulator so you've basically ended up some of people I think have, have just fitted the gauge, the gauge block just here just past the end so as they can uh, see how much air pressure is in the in the air reservoir other people have opened this out and have skimmed a little bit of metal off this tail because you can take a millimeter or two up of the, off the diameter of that and what they've done then is is fitted the gauge block over the tail of the regulator and so you've ended up losing the, the gauge where it was originally but you've moved it further up so they've altered their stock and so that's where it now sits so I hope this has been of some use uh, and that you can see that there's various ways of fitting the, the regulator into the Benjamin Marauder uh, depending on what you want to achieve some people like to keep the gauge block in because they like to see that the regulator is putting out the correct pressure. Some people don't mind losing the gauge block because it means they've got more air in the reservoir tank. Some people still want to use the gauge block and so they put the gauge block back the other side behind the regulator. Uh, and so they can see there's a number of combinations you can do but if you don't want to uh, drill, uh, machine or muck about with your Benjamin Marauder, the simplest method is just to take the gauge block out and 
fit the regulator straight up against the uh, outlet valve assembly and that's it. Uh, I'm sorry I've not done a full tutorial actually taking a Benjamin Marauder to bits but we don't see many of them uh, here in the UK. I think it looks a fantastic gun but you don't see that many up for sale new or second hand really uh, and there's all these different combination methods so some of you might want to keep the gauge block, some of you might want to move it, some of you aren't bothered whether you've got it or not. Uh, it also obviously depends on the, the power output that you're looking for. If you're in the United Kingdom uh, or somewhere where you've got a, a say a 6 to 18 foot pound uh, air gun power limit then you should be able to just fit the regulator in straight up against the outlet valve block. Uh, maybe alter the inside of the uh, valve block a little bit but that should uh, suffice. If you've got a very high powered uh, Benjamin Marauder that you use for, I don't know, hog or turkey shooting, then you're really going to need to uh, hollow out your ga uh, gauge block and fit in fit in the spacer like, like that. Uh, now, now just one last thing which I've also seen some people do. Some people have uh, made up the equivalent of a gauge block but it isn't a gauge block so it's the same but it hasn't got the gauge fitted in it so all they've basically got is a hollow tube with two o-rings on just to seal up the gauge hole and that's been used as a, like a giant outlet valve standoff like we issue for some guns and then they've just put the regulator in just there and the gauge has disappeared they've just used a tube with o-rings on it to seal that up so they're the different methods I hope I've not confused you and I hope from that you can choose what you'd like to do and it just shows you that you can fit it into the Marauder with the absolute minimum of alteration to the rifle itself. So thank you very much for watching.